babies or something like that. Mm. We started right. off with sexy babies. Uh-huh. Sexy babies is a lot better than doing it with your mom. Yeah, I liked Green Amulet. Was was the f- I saw the, their graduation show. Yeah, it was I a good show. It. I loved it. It was. It was you and Nick and Kelly Mack. And, uh, and it was the graduation show that changed all graduation shows. See, like, the I format the literally became the format out. after that. They were like, well, that was great, so let's make everyone do Megaphone. Well, not everyone does, <laughs> not everyone does an Armando for their graduation, though. Yeah, but that's the idea. Oh, okay. I, the idea is that all future graduations would be Armando. The one we did, like, a week and a half ago. Yeah, you know, mine! I know, but there were too many of them. Oh, oh. yeah. There were four, four friggin' kajillion people on that stage. We had to just do montage. It was easier. Whereas, um, when there's a class that's, like, seven people, you know, mm-hmm. you gotta, you wanna add some sass, some jazz. Yeah. Like, what was your first improv troupe? Well, now I'm, I don't know how to answer that question because, um... Change the, the name. Well, because the... I don't remember what we went out as, like, during our level one recital. I don't mm-hmm. know if that was part of your question. No, it doesn't count. Okay, so then the troop that we formed, like, still in classes was Pinewood Derby. Mm. Pinewood Derby. We yep. s- oh, we actually started off as Fortune Cookie, and then we changed it to Pinewood Derby. And mm. then somebody, I guess, it was a joke because we had changed it already. Then Michael called us Pine Box Derby, which was funny because after that show, like, we didn't do any more shows. And I was like, oh, that makes sense because we're dead. <laughs> yeah. Great. You know what though? Um, all all first improv troops die. Like like you can't stay in the same way that like any person who like with their first um, like girlfriend ever don't do that. That's not good. Um, you need to have more than one of all the things. And improv troops for sure. You know what I mean? Like Ghost Prom was like a crazy group. It was like the first uh, student troop at TNM, and it was totally crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, it was born out of a, a, a crazy scene that we had done, but it was like, we were, we did two shows mm. or like maybe five or six shows, I guess, but we like made a big deal every time. And then we never had a show again. Mm. And I was like, oh, well. See, with Green Amulet, it was like, we'd all just taken classes together. Yeah. It was like the one thing that connected us all. Uh, so it was weird because it was like, I don't know, I... Super Shakes, you all came together, right? Well, Super Shakes was for the Summer League, which oh, yeah. was like okay. a, it was like a, a cage match style competition. Did you get put together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they randomly drew together. Well, I think they made captains, and then the captains had to recruit. And I think the captain of our team was Julie, Julie oh, yeah. Cope, Julie Cope, and now Sweck. Um, but yeah, she uh, she put together a team. It was me, Leia, Karen. And Courtney Sevener. Yeah. That was a good group. And it was very good. I feel like that's probably, like, one of the most fundamental... I wish we did more of that. More of, like... Because I think beta is supposed to be that way. But it's... I don't know. It needs... I think it needs more, like, you pick a captain, that captain goes and puts together a dream team. I did like Summer League. That was fun. Yeah. Then then, then you feel like you're part of somebody's dream team. Like, because when someone... I was in level three and someone's like, hey, do you want to be in this group with us? I was like... Yeah, sure. And I thought I didn't know what I was doing, and then people were like, Nathan, you're funny, and it's like, what? And then, like, that, it was like jet fuel for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, after <laughs> a certain point, all the troops you're making are troops you're making yourself. Yeah. I mean, like, I put together Dirty Sunshine. Yeah. I liked, I liked doing the, like, I liked the way Green Amulet, like, we all watched each other just make a lot of mistakes and stuff. Like, we'd all been in class together for so long that there was, like, this weird kind of friend, like, connection we all had on mm-hmm. stage that... I, uh, I liked, as opposed to, like, just every, trusting everybody, that everybody's great, and kind of coming <laughs> in their carte blanche, you know? I haven't put yeah. together a team in a long time. I haven't done that. I Sometimes, worry. too, you have to be inspired by the people. Like, yeah. you don't put together a team until those people are around you, and then you're like, ooh, these people are cool. I worry because I'm just, I feel like I'm overbearing as a person. Because, like, I, I used to say to, like, pilot's license, taken seriously, you know, as of the groups, I'm like, guys, I'm not in this to make friends. I want to be big someday. And be like, maybe Nathan, saying that directly to people go, is a little go intense. Go eat a sock, you dummy. Somebody told you go eat a sock? No, I made that up. Oh, that's a pretty, I like that. It's funny. So, I know I didn't laugh. That was funny. It's mean and not too mean. It's like, that would just be uncomfortable, probably. Eat a sock. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, Let's, like, do that's it. Like, Let's that's start like, using it. That's fine. No, this is egg. a catchphrase. I always liked sucking an egg. Oh, like sucking egg, egg is great. Because that's just oh, like, yeah. pointless, more so than just like... For those of you in Austria, 
Suck an egg means to go down on a woman. Um, <laughs> uh, which I'm either? Yeah. All right. Like, the second egg. You speak Austrian, dude? Oh, uh, you're, you're talking about socks. Yeah. So someone told you to go suck a sock. No. <laughs> someone, what's something with a sock? Eat a, sock. Eat, a eat, a sock. eat a sock. No one's ever said to go eat a sock. I was actually thinking of put a sock in it, <laughs> and I just decided to switch it up. I like that. I think um, maybe uh, the issue is not that you're overbearing, rather that um, rather that you are self conscious about a fear of your being overbearing, and that actually causes your anxiety um, kind of like acts mm-hmm. out, and and you say things like, "I'm not here to make friends." Even if you are, just don't say it to people. Right. Here's the other thing that maybe will begin to fill your bones as you become a 30-year-old. Is um, when I was in my 20s, I thought, like, I had to tell everyone everything I thought. And, like, it was really important that they, like, knew my opinion. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's not. No one cares. Mostly keeping your mouth shut is the best plan. Oh. Not telling people what you think. Probably best. Now, in the interest of our previous conversation where it was like someone's getting attacked, no, fucking go help that person. No. No. But, like, in go the help interest that person, of, like, like, giving them a piece of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, if my opinion doesn't need to, like, ruin or affect the room in, like, such a crazy, ridiculous way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, I think that you're, you're not, like, a horrible person to, um, well, that one's mine. Uh, you're not a horrible person to uh, perform with or like interact with. So, no, no. like it's just you know, like, relax guy, that bit of the fear as you're going to create groups. I'm the guy who like you know, if practice gets canceled, or if I just don't feel like we're doing enough shows, I don't feel like we. Or I feel like we had like a few off shows. I'm like, what do we do? Emergency measures, you know. I'm the guy who wants to who wants to go do festivals in other in other cities, you know, mm-hmm. and like get out there. And, and, you know, sometimes people are like, I'm just doing this for fun. You know? Yeah, you just got to find the people that are, that want the same things as you. It's like any relationship, you know what I mean? Like, I'm married now, so I'm, uh, you know, unlikely to have any more romantic li- relationships. But I have lots of friendship relationships and, and improv troops and sketch groups are those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes you can't just add new people and expect the dynamic to change. Or you can't just, like create a group without like knowing anything about these people so like you know you've been around a while the more you're around you know connect with people and then if somebody's like just doing it the way you do it or like i'm this is so important to me really do this then that's the people that you take in and if anybody is like why can't you know because the other thing too is that people will want to work with you that maybe just don't have the drive that you want to have in your projects and you have to be like sorry Mm -hmm. you know and that's okay that happens yeah um you know there's people out there you sort of have to wait for them no. I mean, no offense, you both are wonderful, and uh, I'm, what I'm going to say is going to be mildly offensive to you both, um, but uh, the neighborhood never felt as good as right now. Like, I did it for six years, and this year is the first year I finally feel like I'm doing something that, like, yeah. I feel ownership over. Like, well, and like I the think previously, the writer's room now, which is yeah, good. yeah. I think previously it was like other people's sketches that I was putting on stage, and it was like it just didn't feel like we were connected to it. And now it's like I feel like we're connected to it. When we say the jokes on stage, we're like, remember that? Remember when we came up with that? Mm-hmm. So. You know, no, it definitely that, seems better. It, it feels better. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like I'm doing something now. And, you know, it's just a matter of trial and error. Like, I could have given up on that years ago, but I didn't. I could have been like, forget it. Just don't, I don't need to do this anymore. But I just kept making shows. So, I mean, you know, you just sort of have to keep, see if there's anybody else that, that you dig on. And, you know, my other... Well, problem maybe is that no one's as talented as I am. So... Oh, my God. And also, like... But there's it... plenty of people as pompous. <laughs> Yeah, like do it for fun, also while That's... you're wait, like while you're kind of waiting for those people. Like, don't let it not be fun yeah. just because you're not like finding the thing, right? Oh That's well, like... I was just gonna mention that. I mean, wouldn't it be beneficial to have like a mix of those people, especially if you're creating a troop? Like, it would be mm-hmm. nice if let's ha- okay, like six people, and you have one or maybe two, like a third of it being like they're just doing it for fun, but they are committed. Um, that way, it's like, oh yeah, it'll c- keep me grounded in the sense of this is fun and. But there is, like, I want to achieve more from it. Yeah, it's yeah. I guess the problem is that a lot of times, like, scheduling and then, like, um, you know, making it a priority to accomplish is difficult for people that are just doing it for fun. Yeah. You know, the people that are just taking classes to, like, 
take classes yeah. um, aren't necessarily interested in putting and go, being at the theater four nights a week. You know what I mean? And that's a difficult thing, but most of us do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, And also, it's difficult, too, when people have, like, families and things like that. If you, if you can't make the group a priority, you know, like, it, it why be part of it? And, I, and I, don't, I know that to a certain extent, yes, there's the part that's just the funsies groups. And if you want to have a fun troop, great. But for when you're like trying to build something in a way that's like, if this improv troupe works really well, then it could develop into whatever. Because like in the career longevity idea of it, it's like, who's going to see this that could be like, you guys are stars or whatever. Or even just people in the, audi- in the Austin the audience that are like, oh, I'm so happy I got to see this. This has made my day. You know, that's great. I was part of yeah. a talent showcase, the new movement, some time ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that come up, uh, as far as developing, uh, groups and, and sometimes you want to be on the same page as far as like uh, what effort you want to put in. Cause if you're putting your heart and soul into something and somebody else is just sort of half-assing it or like acting like they don't care, it, it can really hurt. The weird thing yeah. is you find so many people who ha- who are that way, but, Which way? uh, who like, in every other minute, except for the ones on stage, they are, they're going through the motions. Like, they're not, they're not trying in practice. They're not going and taking workshops. They're not, like, working on their game all the time, but they're just, they're a powerhouse on stage. And I can think of a lot of people like that that I've worked with. That it's like, well, I like what you bring to the stage, but one, it's going to be the same thing every time. It's never going to get any better. Mm-hmm. And two, like, you're never going to get anywhere with your attitude. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who are relying on their, like, natural ability to make people laugh. I mean, yeah. you know, like, n- and not just the funny guy Todd's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you you have people who, uh, and I, I have done this for years. Like, I rely on the fact that most people like me when they first meet me constantly. I put, sometimes I'll put very little effort into, like, what I'm doing on stage because I'm like, it doesn't matter. They're going to like me anyway. Mm-hmm. And that's a very, like, pompous sort of, like, overconfident thing to say. But I mostly get good response. So uh, so that is what holds me back. And sometimes I'm like, and I say to myself, and very, you know, I was like, I got to start working on stuff that I don't think I'm good at. So that maybe I can try to get better. Because I'm I'm plateauing in my own way. Yeah. Of like, you know, it's lucky that I teach because the teaching of other people is what enriches me. And then I can go translate that on stage when I'm doing it myself. Yeah. And thank God I have an improv troupe now to like friggin, you know, warm up with an exercise. But for a long time, I was just going out there being like, fucking everybody in this place loves me. So they're going to laugh. Yeah. And he did. And God damn it. They did. And, but that's a, that's a crutch. I mean, it's a total crutch. I did it in New York and I hit a plateau and then I was like, I got to get out of here. Uh, I was just doing stuff and the audience knew me. And so I would go up and I wouldn't have to do anything. I'd just be like, what's up guys? And they'd be like, Hey man, what's up? You know, like, I don't know. And you know, I've always relied on that. Just taking it for granted that after a short period of time, everybody in this crowd is going to like me. And then I'm just going to go up and be like, yeah, everyone's going to support me. And that's crazy. But, um, it, it does, it holds me back for sure. You know, like I, I, I recently, where do you take the classes, by the way? Cause I was looking at taking some classes and I wonder. It is in the moment acting studio. Ah. Yes. The instructor, the, the owner instructor is Laurel Vouvray. And she's wonderful and she's well known and she hmm. helps Tynus us. Taking that with Tynus, yeah. Tynus was in my class, but he, uh, is no longer, um, he's taking this month off. Oh, okay. But, oh right, because it's a it's a thing that you take sort of yeah, monthly. It's month to month, but you should you can and I mean it seems like should stay in the same class perpetually. So that and then and then you do move up to an advanced class at some point. Um, Whatever sales pitch that she can, she said to convince that to be the case, bless her, bless her heart to convince people to just stay in classes. You just never with her. you're never going to be good enough to not. Have oh, I, I love that. I love that. God bless you. I mean, you know. I'm I'm still getting there, but I I do believe in the instruction and the method. And I mean, if nothing else, it is a fantastic community of other performers. Because not all. It's great. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes you go to a student union, you know, and you get in, and you get in a group, and you're like, "Hey, I'm here to do the work, guys." 
And then you go on stage and you do your bit, you know, you do your piece, whatever, and you're like, 